Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna be making a tool. I don't really know what it's called, but the point of it is, is to be able to check what size tire you can fit, tire wheel combination you can fit on any given bike. So for instance, this is obviously a 26 inch wheel and it's a two inch or 2.1 inch tire, but I'm curious as if I could fit a 27.5 inch wheel, 650B wheel with like a 40 mil tire. So this tool basically, will work as a wheel. You put it on an axle, which I don't have the axle yet, and you have to make the tool, or you can buy the tool as well. And then you're gonna take, you have different size inserts. I printed out a couple of them on my 3D printer. It's a 38 and a 40. You can of course download and print out whatever size you want. So just to be clear, these will, this is a half scale drawing by the way. So, uh, but anyway, these will go on the end like that. And uh, then you can check for clearance without having to buy the wheel, buy the tire. I did uh, create this paper full scale size one, um, which we're going to use to make the real one. Now I happen to have this uh, piece of quarter inch plywood that I think is gonna work perfectly uh, for this project. It's a little thicker than I wanted. It's quarter inch, whereas these cutouts, which it's gonna have to connect with, are only three millimeters. So luckily I printed these out solid so I can probably just file them uh, open a little bit to make them fit. I got this cool old bandsaw a couple years ago. It's a Sprung, Sprunger, Sprunger brand. I don't know when it was made. It's very old obviously. I uh, bought it for like $60 on Facebook Marketplace. The motor is like way back there, and so it takes a lot of room. It has like a house style switch. I didn't change any of this. That's the way it came. Anyway, let's go ahead and get this cut out. None of those dimensions really matter that I've cut so far. The ones that are gonna matter, the ones that I'm gonna do next, which is this slot and then these three slots. So I'm gonna be very careful doing these. For everything else here, I'm just gonna use files to bring everything to the final shape. This file here has a slight amount of roundness, roundness, radius to it. So that'll help uh, allow me to round out that corner, which I couldn't quite do perfectly with the bandsaw. Now over at this end, these are supposed to fit onto here like that. Um, they are not gonna fit. They're partially gonna fit, but they're not gonna fit all the way like they're supposed to because this slot is way too narrow. It's about half the thickness that it needs to be. So I'm gonna have to file these out wider. Luckily I printed these out solid, so I can do that. They're not hollow pieces. Um, yeah, I could have 3D printed this as well, but it was actually way too big for my 3D printer and I started actually doing it in two pieces, but then I realized I was gonna have to like epoxy it together and do this and that, and it was gonna take like two hours for each piece if I printed them solid. So I just decided it would be easier just to cut it out of wood with the bandsaw. So that's where, why I didn't 3D print that. Um, okay, I did a few things off camera, including adding some information to this, like you know my name and when I created it. I like to do that just for fun what it is, and these different slots indicate which tire size you're gonna be gauging for, whether it be a 29 inch, 27.5, or 26. And then I just mentioned here, this is for a nine millimeter axle, which is your standard through axle. I also harvested, let's say, <laughs> a, a through axle from an old hub. I decided to use it. You could also probably use some kind of um, threaded rod you could get at the hardware store. So, but I'm using this because then I can also use the quick release, which I thought would be nice. 
Okay, so last night I went ahead and printed pretty much all the sizes, at least from 34 to 54. And I also came up with a different approach on the whole entire axle part itself. So what I decided to do, what I thought would be better, is to actually uh, just lock these two um, nuts together in their respective positions, which is 135 millimeters between here and here. That way, then I can simply put this axle in just like that and it kind of holds itself. Or I can put the skewer through it too. Then I can take then I can take my tool and just, you know, eyeball center it oops, where it needs to go. By the way, the 54 millimeter tire will clear according to this, but it's pretty close. That's probably the max on a 27.5 wheel. Cool. So the front axle is a little bit smaller in diameter and also it's narrower. I don't have a front wheel or a front axle, but coincidentally down the street somebody was throwing a bike away that does have probably that 100 millimeter axle. They put it in their truck because nobody was taking it. I'm assuming they're going to take it to the dump, so I'm going to knock on the door and see if they'll allow me to have it. Hey, good morning. Hey, you mind if I take that bike out of your truck? I've seen it been sitting down for a while. Yeah. All right, thanks, man. Take care. So here's our donor bike, and it's pretty much a piece of junk. Um, has very few even parts that I would want to take off of it, but I think the axle hopefully will work. That's what I got it for. So let's go ahead and harvest that axle. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Your bench vise is one of your most important tools in the shop. It's like a third pair of hands. Use it all the time. You can crush things a little bit. You can hold things. It's, uh, I always have to have a bench vise. It doesn't have to be this big, but something. Keep these ball bearings for who knows what. I'll keep those in the bag all greasy like that to help prevent rust. And then when I do need them, I'll clean them off. Okay, so I kind of rearranged the nuts um, on this axle. So I need 100 millimeters here. That's the width of the fork dropouts. And another really important tool I think to have in your shop is a set of calipers. I got these from Harbor Freight, I think for like, you know, next to nothing, like $3 or something. I would always, always recommend having one of these your calipers and your uh, bench vise. So anyway, 100 millimeters we need to be at. It doesn't really matter that much back and forth. Um, let's see where we at now. We are at 103, so I'm just gonna bring it in a little more. Okay, I tested it on the fork and the width is exactly perfect, but to my surprise, the diameter here is actually slightly too big. I'm gonna go ahead and lock these in place by rotating them opposite directions. Um, for that, once again, we use the vise to hold it Nice and steady. Oops, don't want to play, move that around too much. And then I'll hold this bottom one still and then, is that the right size? Yeah, it should be. It's very, it has a lot of play. I, I really want to replace this with a better wrench. Um, I think it's pretty worn out, but there we go. Lock that down. Do the same to the other side. The accuracy here isn't like dead critical. Uh, I think this will be just fine. We're just gonna take a little bit off. All right, let's test that. starting to go in. 
Oh, no, actually, that's all the way. Perfect. Perfect fit. All right, easy peasy. Now let's go ahead and take our tool and see, see what we can fit. So I got my tool. I'm going to go with my 54, the biggest size. So this should go on like that. Okay, it's a bit looser because this axle is smaller, but I mean, it's, it's very minimal. I don't think it matters that much. I'm going to put the 54 and the 27.5 because I want to see how big of a 27.5 this bike can take. So, oh, it is fine other than the reflector. Okay, now that the reflector is out of the way, you can see we have plenty of clearance for the 54 millimeter tire on a 27.5 inch rim. Let's see what it would do if we put it on a 29 inch rim though. The same 54 millimeter tire. I don't think it's going to work. Nope, that does not work. So this fork will not accommodate a 54 millimeter tire on a uh, 700C 29er wheel. But what size would it work with? Let's go down to 44. Would a 44 clear? Let's check. Uh, yes, not a lot of extra space. I feel like that's cutting it a bit close. But indeed, according to this, a 44, even on a 29er or 700C should work. Okay, as a sanity check, I got the tool on the back. I couldn't do the front because my, um, the wheel I was going to use is a, is a through axle. Um, but on the back, I put the, I'm on the 29er 700C slot and I'm using the 34 millimeter insert. And it looks like we have, maybe I should measure it. The main clearance problem, if you want to call it that, is the back direction. Um, it's about the same for both the seat stay and the chain stay bridge. And it looks like it has enough clearance. It looks like it's saying this 34 millimeter. Now my, my tire is actually a 35. I'll measure how wide it actually is, but it's a 35 millimeter tire. It looks like we have, let's see if I can get in here. This is a, not super accurate, but about 10 millimeters, about one centimeter clearance. So what I'm going to do now is put the actual uh, wheel on and let's see if that's the same. Now this wheel is measuring out exactly 35 millimeters, so it might be a little tighter even than the gauge, but it shouldn't be too much. Okay, I got my 35 millimeter 700C 29 inch wheel in the frame, and it actually does fit. So I think my gauge is correct. It's a little tighter, it looks like, than what my gauge was measuring, but that kind of makes sense because this is a, it's hard to see here. Let's take a look here. This is a slightly larger tire there. Okay. So it's in here and it actually does fit other than that. Uh, no problems, no rubbing. It's a little bit less clearance than my gauge showed, but this is a slightly bigger tire too. So that kind of makes sense. Pretty cool. So this old GT can take up to 700 C 35 millimeter. Of course we have no brakes now because this is a disc brake uh, wheel, but I, I am still toying with the idea of putting some uh, disc brake tabs back here. I think that would be pretty cool. I don't think I'd run 700 C. I think I'd go with the 27.5 with uh, 42s or something like that might be neat. So. Okay, I'm pretty much finished making this tool and I'm really happy with how it turned out. So it's really easy to make anybody, well, if you have a 3D printer, you can easily 3D print these. I can put a link to all this stuff down below. Um, if you don't, you could probably make these out of wood. I'm sure you could make these out of wood as well, or even cardboard if you want. Um, for this part here, you can you make this if you have a band saw or even perhaps a hacksaw or any kind of saw really. These obviously were just axles that I, um, sourced from old bikes. Uh, there's also another design I saw that's more 3D printer friendly where it uses like a rod instead of this this kind of wood. And you could even 3D print this too if you wanted to. I just thought it would be easier to uh, 
make out of wood. Not sure if that ended up being true or not. But anyway, that's pretty much it. It's a really cool tool. I'm glad that I made it. Uh, I am going to do one more thing though. And since I was in the 3D printing mood, I went ahead and printed these things here. They're called uh, Painter's Pyramids. And now I should have paint, uh, done four of them because I'm actually gonna go ahead and paint this tool, not paint it with a uh, real paint, but kind of a poly coating. So th those work like that. So that it raises your work off of the ground and so I should have got four probably because I didn't think about how thin this was, but hopefully it'll work if I'm really gentle anyway. So yeah, I actually had changed this out of a jar because the jar got so rusty, but it's some kind of like wood poly coating. I really like how, I like how wood turns out when you, uh, when you apply this coating. So I have to be pretty careful here. I did a little bit of light sanding on it just to kind of smooth it a little bit, but because I already started writing on it, I couldn't sand it too much. So. Not worried about it. This isn't a pretty tool or anything. It's just a get the job done tool. And this coating isn't just uh, for looks. It'll also make it more durable. And since it'll be water, more water resistant, if it gets a little bit moisture, it won't uh, um, get into the wood itself as much. It kind of creates a, um, this stuff is super easy to apply, especially on a smaller part like this. It only takes a short time. Have you ever made one of these tools, ever bought one of these tools? You can buy them. I don't know if I mentioned that, but I think, I think they're, you can buy these in places. I think I saw a couple of places were out of stock, but I did see some that were like 25 bucks. I don't know if they're in stock and available, but you know, obviously this is a way more <laughs> work, but I anyway, know it's kind of cool. Make your own thing. So I'll go ahead and let this, uh, sit for about 30 minutes till it dries up enough that I can flip it over and do the other side. Okay, that's the finished tool. Let me know what you think, everybody. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.